for the last. Right. Hey, it's Chris Homestead and Harway. And this ain't what we're going to talk about, but something I want to cover. The dog don't stick her nose in my drink. Oh, the old corn grinder finally give up on me. 100, yeah, probably 120 years old. They don't make nothing of ass, I don't reckon. But I busted a plate. Things I antique, man, no parts available. Uh, if anybody out there in YouTube land has a clue where we could find a plate for a burr meal, your help would be greatly appreciated. They will complete that out on top of everything else. Bolts will work loose in them. Three hole. Three hole plate. I don't know. There ain't no dimensions on anything we found online. But anyway, we ordered one of the Chinese ones they make now. I think you can get them from Walmart. It might be your safest bet as far as not getting scammed. But we ordered one, maybe here in a few days. And I told a lot of people that if I ever got the extra money, I was going to do a review on one anyway. Now, I've got a hammer mill that Johnny Sharp was nice enough to bring me. It was donated to him to donate me. And I've got to do a video on that. And Johnny, I'm sorry that we haven't done that video. And I haven't got that thing fixed. But I've got a book. I've got a five gallon bucket of excuses. If you'll call me, I'll give you two or three of them. But this thing got it done. But this breaking shut our operation down. This is the end of it. <clears throat> and it got me to thinking about just how important being able to make your own feed is. I don't care if it's chicken feed, cow feed, whatever. Which this won't make cow feed. It'll make something to go in cow feed. You can grind corn and go in cow feed, but it won't actually make cow feed. Cow feed's too coarse for this. And push come to shove, if they had good plates and everything, it'll make flowers. You can make your own wheat flour and cornmeal wheat if you had to. But it's, a, it's kind of a fundamental tool. And when this one broke, I was calling everybody in the world talking about it. And, you know, it's brought up several times that years ago, every farm had one. Every farm had a meal. And now nobody's got one. Nobody's got one. You see a farmer every once in a while has got a mixer grinder to make cow feed with, and there's a few people have something to make hog feed. No, not every farm don't have one of these. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of kind of varying thought on what you have to have to farm with. But I couldn't make it without a tractor. I'm not talking about a new tractor with a front end loader on. I'm just an old farm, old one row tractor to tend a garden with, and an old two row, or two slash one row first, and like a 35. The utility work with bush hog, mow, disc. And you tend a garden with it too. I have uh, Pittsburgh cultivators to bed with. We use a 30 Ferguson to bed, run rows, and plow. And you do it all with those. You've got to have a little bit of farm equipment. You've got to have a disc. You've got to have a bush on. You need probably a fishing bowl. You need a better. You need a plow. A cultivator, excuse me. Breaking plow is not something you use very much. We have a grain drill that we use. Uh, you need a corn planter. There, there are several things that are just fundamental tools for farming. And I mean, yes, you can do it with a shovel and a weed hoe if you've got enough time and you've got a small enough place. But nobody ever seems to cover that. Nobody ever seems to cover what you actually need to farm with and what is really a necessity. And I know to everybody, the ability to make their own feed wouldn't seem like a necessity, but it kind of is for us. The difference in cost between bulk feed and made feed is so great that it makes a difference on whether or not we make any money at all or make it work or be able to afford to do it. And, you know, we set out a mission to try to help people and try to steer you in the right direction. And it's hard, it's hard to convince people of the way things really are. The fairy tale is so deeply ingrained in some folks. Uh, but maybe we'll cover while we got you, so it ain't a two minute video. We're fixing to get our cows at any time. Uh, we decided to quit raising brood cows. We're just not gonna have brood cows at all. We're not gonna be in the dairy business anymore. All I'm going to do is get feeder cows from a neighbor and feed them out and I'm going to sell beef, not cows. Not cows. The pigs, we've slowly been transitioning over. We sell breeding stock. We sell some feeder pigs and we're going to sell topped out hogs for pork. You're going to buy the pigs from us dressed. 
you've got to adapt. The food shortages, I believe, are going to be completely a problem. I believe they're real. I've seen too many of the big outfits that gone under this year. I see how what the prices are at the grocery store. I actually made a reconnaissance trip to the grocery store to see how much meat is going up because we don't buy much. And I think it might be time to get right people and start producing your own know, meat. The push politically with this, there's something about some tax. It's going to be $600 a hog if they got it passed and $2,500 a cow. I don't know if that's real or not. It's something that I guess has been busting around Facebook. This hope is not true. <laughs> but really, to me, it seems like there's a war on people trying to raise their own food. From local regulations to on up, you know, it's just, it's worse. It's concerned. And I think it may, being grandfathered in does make a difference. I mentioned that in other videos. If you're already doing it when they pass the law, you might not have to quit. So it might be the time to get started. We'll do a review on that new meal when it comes in. I hope it'll be here. Maybe it'll show up tonight. I know it won't. But it's coming from Canada. They said it was in route. I reckon I would have went there and picked it up as I need it. But uh, for anybody that's concerned as far as my health conditions going on, we, we're back open. I seem to be, I make it about a half a day before I feel so bad I got to quit. I did a little welding today. It didn't seem to affect me too bad. I put my magnet in the wrong pocket yesterday, my little pocket magnet, and it jacked me up pretty good. Never would have thought that would have been an issue, but apparently it was enough. Apparently that little snap on magnet right there was enough to throw something right away. And I believe the dog just got a good victim of drink. But uh, anyway, that's a little update for you. Something you look forward to, because we're going to do a review as soon as it comes in. And we're going to do a video, not tonight, because I had a couple of phone calls and we ran out of the lot. But the next thing we're going to cover is pig breeds and pig breed. Uh, there's too much of, I bought a pig and I googled a red pig with prick ears, so now I've got a red water. Or I bought a pig and it's a black pig with flop ears, and so i got a large black. Or I've got a pig with spots, so I must have a Gloucester. Or, uh, you know, I've got a black pig with white feet, so it must be a Berkshire. And I saw some ads for pigs for sale, because, you know, I'm always looking new breeding stock. I'm looking a good do-rock this, or a good do-rock sow, or whatever. Good hamp boy. I'm always looking breeding stock for me and other people. And I saw an ad today... For a do rock pigs, a do rock Hampshire cross pigs, and I pulled the pictures up, and it was a bunch of white pigs nursing a spotted sow. There ain't no do rock or hamp either one there. I go ahead and tell you that. Not not recently. There have been some in the past. Or uh, I see these ads all the time. Large black pigs for sale. And you pull up the picture, and this old black sow, she's a do rock hand cross is what she is. I got some of them that come out solid the black. But she'll have some listed pigs, some white listed pigs running around her. You know, people just don't know what they got. So whatever they think will sell, or whatever the picture looks like, they'll Google a picture. And then we need to talk about that. We need to... The truth is, that's not a bad thing. If you're getting meat pigs, it doesn't matter. Because... All large conventional pig breeds are about the same size. There's just minor differences with conformation, or this breed has a little bigger hams than this breed, or this breed's a little better on pasture than this breed, or this breed has better feet for walking on concrete than this breed. There's really nothing there that affects meat quality other than maybe the length of the pig. You want a good long pig if you want bait. You know, the do-rocks and the hamps are better if you're carrying hams. They have nicer hams normally in shoulders. So it's not that big of a deal. But when you're starting a breeding program, you need to know what you got. And the only way you know you're going to know what you got is what is what the people tell you when you get them. It can be a little bit of a, it, it can be an issue. Somebody asked me a question in the comments. Might be last night about a red water. And... 
I don't know. I know Big Mike over at River Bottom had some red, had a red water boar, actual red water boar. And there's been a few more around. But they didn't come locally. They had to be gone off and got somewhere. And they're just old, slow growing hard type hogs. Ain't nothing wrong with it. But you cross them with some of this newer blooded stuff and get something in the middle, you've really got a good pig. But most of the red wattles I see are old Tamsworth cross. You know, not the right shade of red. This had to be a big red, pretty cute pig. Must be a red wattle. Because that's what everybody wants. But anyway, I'm rambling again, said so I wouldn't do it. But look, just remember, y'all do all this stuff. <coughs> if I can help you, I'll help you. But you won't do it sitting on the couch thinking about it. And times are getting a little tough, and you might need to get after it. So you'll never do it thinking about it. You'll never plow a field turn it over in your mind. So you get on up and get after it. If we can help you, we'll help you. And there's a lot of other people that are trying to help you. There's a lot of good information on YouTube. There's a lot of the extension office will help you. The information is out there if you can weed it out a little bit. And I appreciate your time, and I will talk to you later.